Good evening. This is our Monday, March 23rd Board of Selectmen's meeting. Um, this meeting is occurring under the Zoom video telephone teleconference for the allowance under the Governor's Emergency Order Number 12 that state that is waived the requirement of having a quorum of the board physically present for a public meeting. I call this meeting to order with a roll call. Alan Silly. Present. Andy Fitch. Here. Bob Letourneau. Here. Ann Barney. Here. Eli Badger is here. The first thing on the docket is approval of minutes from March 15th, 2021. You have Craig in the waiting room. Okay, I'll get Craig in the wa and, waiting room. No. Do I hear a motion? Any corrections to the minutes of March 15th? I'll make a motion that they be approved as written. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Alan Silly. Aye. Andy Fitch. Aye. Bob Letourneau. I wasn't here for that meeting, so I'm going <clears> to <throat> I'm going to uh, abstain. And Barney. Aye. Eli Badger says aye. Moving on. Uh, CRF, CRF expenditures for reimbursements from <laughs> trustees of the trust fund. Ms. Newton. Um, that's Catherine. That's Catherine. Mm -hmm. Yes, Bob. I'm sorry, I wasn't here for that meeting. Can I change my vote? <laughs> I thought it was a different meeting you mentioned. I'm sorry, I apologize. I would vote aye on that. Okay. Catherine? Yes, good evening. So back in 2020, um, we paid some expenditures out of the general fund to KB Partners um, in relation to the TAP project, which is the sidewalk project essentially. Um, so I'm looking for a motion to expend $1,140.40 from the Road Improvement Capital Reserve Fund to reimburse the town for the 20% of the local portion costs for the final design and bidding assistance paid to KB Partners for the TAP Grant Sidewalk Project. Uh, the TAP Grant is an 80-20 split, whereas 80% is reimbursable from the state of New Hampshire, Department of Transportation, and the local match is 20%. Um, Based on prior discussion with the previous board and with the previous um, town manager, the understanding was that 20% portion was to be funded through the Road Improvement Capital Reserve Fund. Um, so these expenditures are paid initially by the town and then reimbursed um, from the state um, and then the trustees of the trust funds. Um, but we do need a motion um, from the board in order to authorize expenditure of those funds from the Capital Reserve Fund and for me to prepare um, a request for reimbursement to the trustees of the trust funds. So this represents two invoices which were paid to KB Partners on September 23rd, 2020 in the amount of $3,462 and on November 25th, 2020 in the amount of $2,240. And do I hear a motion? I would make a motion to move that we approve the expenditure to pay the, was it $1,000? Is that what it was? $1,000? $1, $1,140.40. $1,140.40 to uh, our share of the past 
grant. For the reimbursement of the CRF expenditures. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Alan Silly? Aye. Andy Fitch? Aye. Bob Letourneau? Aye. Ann Barney? Aye. Eli Badger says aye. Old business. Update on sewer budget discrepancy, which I believe was the $30,000 or so that was left out of the budget. Who would like to speak on this? Do anything with that. Catherine? I can speak to this. So um, at our last meeting, we discussed um, how we had a couple issues with the budget that was voted on at town meeting. Um, the biggest of which the interest was excluded from an Excel um, sum, essentially a formula that was just missing a couple cells, one of which was the interest on the bond payment for the septage receiving Headworks project for um, the new facility. Um, so as a result of our last meeting, I reached out to Michelle Clark at DRA and advised her of um, our predicament and asked, um, you know, if there was any way that we could add to our sewer budget since we, you know, are under a loan agreement for um, this bond repayment, the interest portion um, of which had been excluded. So she advised, she replied and said under RSA 33-2, the, the DRA can add the bond payment into the appropriation without a further vote. So um, she, then she sent me all the language of, with the RSA, which I'm happy to forward on to the board if anyone would like to see it. Um, but essentially she said, please just write a letter to DRA um, including the bond schedule and the missing payment amount, she will review and get the process moving forward. Um, so Rusty and I um, looked into this. He wrote up a letter from, you know, as a, the water and sewer superintendent, um, and we included the amortization schedule for the loan and the bond with the interest payments. Um, and I submitted that to Michelle on March 17th. So it looks like we're going to be able to add this to our budget. Um, and we're just really waiting on correspondence back from DRA. Um, once once she replies, I have a couple of follow up questions. Um, you know, if, if I'll have to come up with a new 232 that we may need the board to sign off on and resubmit to DRA. But um, I can keep Fran and Fred apprised of how that moves forward. But it's it's good news for the town overall. Good. Any any discussion comments on this hearing none i'll move on ashland electric department no excuse me job descriptions and posting for utility clerk and aed superintendent we are who's presenting this we sent out um, for the last meeting job descriptions and you were to review them and we were to, I, I've included them again in this packet. Yeah. We need to, you know, just discuss, um, make sure that um, we're all in agreement about these job descriptions. Is there anything that should be added and um, move on to post. Eli, I have a couple of comments that I, uh... Look, when I looked over mine, I made a couple of notes if you guys want to hear them. Please do. Okay, so the Craig Moore. If you want to, if you want to hit, uh, so if you, everybody wants to pull up their copies. Um, what do you want pulled up? Well, no, if they, just everybody wants to look at it. Um, so on page two, um, the competencies and skills. Um, so down at education and experience, it says bachelor's or master, master's degree in engineering or related electrical field preferred. Um, so this talking with Rob about this, he said, 
you're probably never going to get anybody with a bachelor's degree or master's degree, which is also a journeyman or lineman. Um, then right underneath that, you'll see the certification as a journeyman or lineman. So Rob on paper doesn't even qualify for this, even though he's got 30 years of experience. So and I think the important thing to note here is it says preferred. It doesn't say it's a requirement of the of the position. Okay, but I haven't even finished yet. So my okay, sorry, just adding. So my 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 his his idea was, why don't you just put in there, um, whatever associate's degree, with um, years of experience that are. Um, you know, can go as credit towards um, towards it. You know, um, so his thirty years of experience would would have got would go towards a bachelor's or master's degree. So, I mean, his idea was just that you don't want to shut people off because you put a master's degree on there or a bachelor's. So maybe we should just tune that down a little bit. Um, so the next thing to think about is after that little line is the five years experience. Um, so what's that mean? Five years experience. Um, and then under, underneath it, it says five years experience associated with the electrical utilities. So he's thinking maybe you should write the five years experience as a supervisor or superintendent or take it out completely because you've, you've mentioned it down below. Um, and then the other thing at the bottom on the next page was it, it says substation with a lot of question marks on it. Um, I'm not sure why that's on it. Maybe we should just um, add to it that says substation, knowledge of substations maybe, um, and, or just remove it altogether. And then maybe, on the bottom, the applicants must possess a valid class B. Uh, should we move that to the education on the very bottom? Should we move that up just to make it a little more flow a little better? So that's what I had. And I can give all this to Catherine on paper on, on uh, you know, if she wants it to um, just so you guys, I mean, just so you guys get an idea. Craig, that, that's what Rob had uh, mentioned to me, what he saw a problem with. Craig, just a quick question. Where do you see the substation with all the question marks? That's under knowledge. I mean, um, no, uh, I'm sorry. I put that in there. I'm, I'm, I'm reading my own stuff. I feel like. Oh, okay. Um, should we put substation knowledge in there? That, that was what oh, I was. Oh, oh, oh. Add it I to the knowledge wrong. section. Um, so okay. should we add something about uh, substation, uh, knowledge of substations? And I don't know how the board felt. Maybe we should just throw that in there. Yeah, that, that's all I Other than that, Rob, and, and this is Rob looking at it, thought it was pretty good. Thanks, Rob. So I don't know if anybody else had a chance to review it or not. Could I get, can I jump in here a little bit? Yes. Um, under the experience in education, it says a minimum of two years supervisory experience preferred. Wouldn't we rather just have minimum of two years supervisory experience and leave out the word preferred? I would, uh, Bob. Yeah. I would prefer at least two years experience. Exactly. And it says it says preferred, and preferred yeah. means maybe. We could uh -huh. say required or just. Just cancel the word altogether, whatever the board's pleasure is. So a minimum of two years supervisory experience, period. Yeah, but then you've got the five-year thing to think about. Well, yeah, that's just the five-year so, thing that has to do with in, in the trade, as opposed to just being a supervisor. We're talking about a management position. Right. Uh, Somebody so, who's up. I can see where we would want somebody to have experience in the management of a crew, not just 
uh, in the be field. able to do things themselves. Any other comments? Yeah, I think if we, under the education experience, if we move that bottom line up to the um, schooling line, that will cover us. The bottom line says any equivalent combination of education or experience. Yep. And, and knock out the bachelors and masters. I think it would be Okay. So you, is the board saying they want no bachelor's or no degree mentioned whatsoever as a part of the qualifications for uh, electric department superintendent? Well, I think if you're a certification of a journeyman, that qualifies you. Yeah, that's, not an e that's not an easy certification. Like Rob said, maybe you put a you could put associates and equivalent um, experience. Right. How do they word that, Catherine? There's a um, there's a way they word that sentence or equivalent um, experience. Yeah, you know? and I pulled I pulled this together from many different municipalities um, posts and, and what what I saw as the kind of standard bar out there. So I wouldn't go out to the adventure right. to say that it's not um, a normal requirements and for somebody of this position, especially yeah. whereas, you know, the pay scale that we've talked about in non-public sessions and the like, um, I, I'm fine with changing it to whatever. I think my, the question that comes to mind for me is what type of educational degree is required um, to become a journeyman lineman, if any? Well, they go to school for four years and we're sending our guys to school for four years, that gives them a first class lineman. And then after that, they just need the experience on the line and then they become a journeyman. Okay, so the journeyman yeah, lineman experience. isn't associated with like a, an associate's degree or a bachelor's no. degree or anything Rob like that. associate's degree um, in engineering, I think. Okay. Electrical engineering. So you could say that, you know, associate's degree in electrical engineering or um, experience or experience, however they word that. Because his experience that he's been, he's been in this field for 30 years, he's probably more qualified than a, somebody with a master's because he's been doing it so long. Um, and that's how he got hired at the co-op actually. He told me uh, because of his experience, um, they overlooked the, the bachelor's degree they were looking for. Right, which is why we have that last sentence as a caveat. Yeah. That's a pretty boilerplate caveat for any job posting anywhere, any equivalent combination of education and experience. Yeah, well, then that's, yeah. So we could just, we could do that then if that's, if that's, he just suggested we take the master's and bachelor's out because he doesn't know of anybody that's got that plus a certification of, of journeyman. It, right. While he was in Florida, <laughs> you know that because he, 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 you know, had a lot more. You know, down there, there are hundreds of thousands of people. Um, well, what's the board's, through his door when what's he was the board's preference people. between having associates or no mention of the degree in the job description and add? So, what does this job pay? That's something we typically talk about in non-public. I'm not sure if the board's um, comfortable with discussing that in a public session or. I will. I will say, Bob. I have seen reference to pay for an an electric superintendent from eighty five thousand to one hundred and fifty thousand. So. That's the range I've seen. I think that specifying an associate's degree or equivalent 
of education experience and education and experience definitely the five years of experience i would think that at least five years experience would be necessary for this job i agree um a minimum of see five years experience a minimum of two years supervisor experience preferred um and we said we're going to take that preferred out correct yeah. i i think that two years is not enough but i don't have a figure to put in there you could also do a range a minimum yeah. of two well, it, you know it depends upon yes i mean we've already we've already talked about they have to have five years of experience with the design operation construction and maintenance practices um with two of those would hopefully at least be in supervision i think if you're going to hire a supervisor you have to have supervisory experience yeah. absolutely and i think i think that two years is not enough experience but i don't know what the magic number is well, if you made it five years, then it'd be a total of 10 years of experience minimum in the business. You could say three to five years. You could. That's not a bad idea either. And there's your range. How's that? Three to five years. That sounds good to the entire board. Yes. Sounds good to me. Yes. Andy? Yeah, I'm all set. Okay. All right. Yes. Okay. Any other questions, comments on this? I do, Eli. Yes, Alan. Uh, this question is for Catherine. How does this job description differ or compare is the same from the last one we put out? Hmm. Well, I'm not sure if I'm not, I'm not, I don't, I don't want to beat up on it, but I'm just curious. Is there any area that is different from the last job description that we put out? I'm sorry. I was muted that whole time. Wasn't I? Yes. <laughs> Well, you I just said a lot of things. Catherine. I will say it again. So the last time we went out for this um, this job was October 29th of 2019. And it was a general overall staffing of the Ashland and Electric Department. We we're in a similar position as we are now with um, one apprentice lineman. Um, so this was when we went to town manager, former government, the ad. Um, stated in part that AED was going through a reorganization to ensure the successful delivery of electricity to a community of 2,200 residents. The first step was to place the department directly under the leadership of the town manager. Um, it created a streamlined organization with all communications and decision making given the highest priority. AED's next step was to continue to develop its dedicated line operations staff. And to accomplish that, AED was looking for adding one or two team oriented employees that were willing to contribute to establishing a culture of excellence. Given the importance AED places on a participative team environment, it is looking to find employees to fill one or two of the following positions. Three positions were outlined and the extent of the superintendent position stated in full superintendent, an experienced professional with excellent leadership skills and a minimum of five years as a journeyman lineman. Then it went on to describe the journeyman lineman position, the apprentice lineman position, and then just gave some back backstory about Ashland and how to apply to the job. So this is 
quite different from the last time we went out for this position in 2019. a lot more detailed. Um, it outlines the responsibilities, the competency skills, the education and experience required, the knowledge, the ability and skills we're looking for. And importantly, that um, you know, a CDL class B license is a is a requirement since the trucks they drive require such a license to operate. Okay, thank you, Catherine. You're welcome. Anybody else? The only other thing I wanted to add while we're talking about then when we were talking about the number of years um, for supervisory and experience in the field, I did hear from Rob and he said that the minimum power industry is about eight to 10 in a supervisory or management position um, in the field. The bare minimum is seven years supervisory. So I would say that these are on the lower end of, of a years of service experience. And now obviously this is, he's saying the power industry. Um, you know, so there's, there's, a, there's certainly a, a difference between the corporate world and the municipal world. Yes. But we're looking at the longevity in the job and in the position right. for our requirements we have, we boosted it from three to five. Catherine, you think we should put it higher? I, I think it's really ultimately up to the board and management here. Um, <laughs> you know, I think we rely on our experts and, and the people that, that work in the field and have the technical um, experience. So it's just something that I figured I'd bring forward to see if, if the board was comfortable going forward with the three to five in the five years. <laughs> Gentlemen, ladies. Well, and we're not going to tell, and we're not ever source um, for a smaller company, so to speak. <laughs> and if you want to get somebody to come in and do this job, I'm sure we're not going to post it at $120,000. And you never try to attract somebody with these skills. You need to make it somewhat, uh, somewhat attractive. Okay. And, and I would say um, five years is not a long time for to be a supervisor. So I would say maybe we started at five instead of three to five. How do we feel about that? I suspect we'll be all right um, starting at five. Uh, the only, you're gonna get somebody to apply for this that is tired of travel. Um, this is going to be their final stop along the way. They may tend to be a little bit older, but they're not going to, they're going to have the experience, they're just not, they're not going to want to travel anymore. Okay. So I think we'll be all right with five to seven. Bob? I was uh, pretty satisfied with three to five. I, I'm going five to agree. Years experience and, uh, if, you know, if you wanted to pump up the years of experience in the utility field, I feel that would be a, a, a good move. Yeah. I think three to five in the supervisory capacity, we're going to get, I think we'll get some people that are more qualified than others. And I think we'll have a, be, be able to pick and choose, but I don't want us not to look at the guy that is really up and coming. That's a good point. So if we said, 
if we want to put a range on it, four to seven. How about you bump up the minimum years of uh, experience associated with electric utilities from five years to five to five to ten, and then lead the three to five in supervisory? So that could give somebody oh, fifteen years. That's of another that, Bob. That's a, another good way of looking at it. Alan, I'm going to agree with that. Andy, yeah, I'll go along with that. Ann, yep, that works. Works for us. Catherine? Okay, so just to confirm, that was five to 10 years of experience associated with electric utilities and back to the three to five for a supervisory. Correct. Okay. That just, works. You've got it. Okay. So are we done with this topic? Captain, you all set with the language? I think the only other thing that needs to be discussed, um, well, first, I need we uh, we need approval to post this job. I, the next step is to post it on, um, you know, reach out to New Hampshire Municipal Association, which is our resource for all job postings. Um, you know, NEPA, who is really the, the resource to post for all electric fields, um, utility type job postings, and then consider if we want to post in alternate sources. The only other things that we need to consider when we're posting the job, which is a little bit different from the job description, is we take the job description and we narrow it down to a job ad posting, um, and we come up with all the information that we want our candidates to know um, about the position, which would include a salary range. Um, I think it's appropriate to discuss that and obtain where the board, what the board's pleasure is on a minimum and maximum range. Um, that is obviously more appropriate for a non-public session. Um, but any other information that we need for the job um, posting, you know, from the board. Well, we need to move this forward. Uh, we need to get uh, we need to get some hires in here. That we're at the drastic need of it. I absolutely agree. We have uh, unfortunately, it's seven positions we've lost over a seven month period. So this is of the utmost importance. Um, and I think we'll be ready to post as soon as we get the approval to go ahead and have all the information to do so. So do we need a motion to move this forward? Well, what, one for, if we are going to discuss the salary range, is that something you want to do in non-public? If you want to do it in non-public, we have to vote to go into non-public. Um, I would I would suggest we have another job uh, responsibility category coming up, and we could do both of those both of the discussion of the money in one non-public session. That makes sense. I agree. So why don't we why don't we get through uh, the rest of the agenda and then go into non-public in under RSA 91A colon three um, uh, to B for uh, hiring of somebody and under hiring. And if I quoted the wrong one, I'm sure somebody will tell me I'm wrong and that we'll get it done right. That sounds right, I think. <laughs> okay. Uh, the job description of the utility clerk. Okay. 
I only had I only had one question on that one. Okay. So, is it n normal for the be under the direction and the supervision of the finance director and the town manager, as opposed to somebody who works for utilities be under the direction of the person we're going to hire to run the utilities? Or is this something different that I that I don't know about it. When you say utilities clerk, is this electric, sewer, and water? Yes. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm never mind. I don't have a question then. <laughs> yeah. And just to give a little background for you, Bob, that this used to be under the supervisory of um, the superintendents of both water and sewer and then electric. Um, where it became a little bit challenging was we you really have two department heads instead of one in that position uh, and who signs off on your timesheet and who approves your vacation time and the like. Um, and when we moved to town manager form of government and I uh, came on board with the town last June, um, Charlie said it was really his goal at the time to bring it under the finance department because really they're doing um, utility interface with customers, um, doing customer maintenance, doing billing, doing cash receipt collections, and all of those functions really um, are, are in a lot of towns overseen by the finance department. Um, and we were kind of expanding and determining the staffing needs of our finance department at the time. So I think that's where the structure went from or being overseen by the water sewer superintendent and the electric superintendent. Um, to the finance director um, and with town manager form of government, the town manager is oversees essentially everybody in the town, department heads and all employees. It just is a funnel between you have your department level, department heads and those employees and then the next level up is the town manager. Yep, that's that's fine, I, I understand it. Uh, now that I understand that it's a, a utility person for all utilities, you can't have three different bosses. So that's good, thank you. So I'm good with that job description. Now, Catherine, why is this a full-time position? Plain and simple, if we're gonna be open to the public to receive cash receipts, cash payments, um, answer the phones, um, do customer maintenance, do customer changes, do applications for an account five days a week, 40 hours a week, then we need a full-time position. And I think just based on my current experience and how short-staffed we are and how long we've been short-staffed for, there's a mountain of work behind all of us right now. And I think while yes, we're moving towards a handheld electronic system, Realistically, that's not next month. That's months and and even a year down the road that we're going to be at a point where those things are up and running. Okay. I'll see my head. At the knowledge required, and it looks like it's all for the electric department. Is that what you intended? Knowledge required. Are you looking at the um? Utilities collect, I called it utility collection clerk. Clerk, I that was the title that we um, can review. And I think the first step is determining what the job description and the tasks are. And then we, we come back to the job title. But are you looking at the utility collection clerk? I wanna make sure that I am, my screen's been jumping. Not like I've thrown a lot of information at you guys. <laughs> Let me see for utility bills. No, I it must have jumped up to the other one. Yeah, it's jumping. I'm sorry. It it just calls out utilities, Eli. It doesn't say anything about any specific one. Yeah, I it my screen is jumping around for some reason and keeps going back to. The electric supervisor. Okay. Um, I 
I have a question. If if this job is going to be for full time in the office, how is it going to change the people that are in there now and their job? Like, isn't Diane 50-50 for utilities? Yes, she is. So Diane's role um, is to be split part-time between finance and utilities. So she, her, the intention of hiring her was to be able to hand off accounts payable in the payroll processing while I retain the finance director and human resource director functions um, and portions of the job just in seeing how much work that really related to, especially where the town manager used to do a, a fair amount of, of HR tasks in the past and other finance tasks um, and to help with utility billing as well. Um, so it wasn't really, so Diane's really, she's helping with all of the utilities functions just because we're in such a dire need at this point. Um, she's not just helping with the billing process. So she greets the customer, she takes the phone calls um, and is doing just the customer maintenance, um, but she's working on posting cash receipts. And then she's also helping with the billing process. Um, part of, of staffing this position and the way, the reason I, I designed this job description as is because we also have a 2019 audit finding where we had in our governance letter from our 2019 audit results where we have a major lack of segregation of duties where one person is responsible soup to nuts for everything from the customer maintenance to cash receipt collections to generating the bills to doing the adjustments to posting and processing the billing without having you know, formal approval in place or another set of eyes on the process. So part of this for this function for this role is to segregate the duties between the person that collects the cash and posts the payments and the person that processes the billing for the utilities, all three utilities. I don't know if that fully answers everything, Ann. Well, I'm just wondering how are we gonna have to restructure the office to know who's in charge of what? And if the town, if we are going to hire a town manager, wouldn't they take over some of the HR and stuff that you are doing? I would love for that to be the case at the, at the current point in time, but I, I doubt that you're going to find a town manager that's going to want to take those tasks on. Uh, it's, it's to be determined. Um, all I can speak from is my experience and what I've seen before in my last town the town administrator form of government the town administrator was responsible for hr um so it just depends on you know the, the job descriptions and what the selectmen want to be part of that job description for the town manager i'm not sure if this is something that mri i know they've been contracted i'm not sure if they've developed this already it might be a question for them um but it's something to consider well i guess if the board sees fit that that's what they should be doing, that's what we, we would hire them to do. I guess I'm just trying to figure out for the office how we would, you know, reconstruct or know who's in charge of what, what job is supposed to be do done by which person so that we just kind of know who's doing what. If this person is full time, which part is Diane going to do and Anne? So I think the, the goal, and this is part of the importance of having good formal job descriptions. Um, you know, with a, with a small town, everybody kind of takes the approach of we all wear multiple hats and we all chip in to help each other out. And it's a teamwork type of collaborative effort. Um, but as I've previously discussed with some of you, any time that's a part of everyone's task, it takes away from your ability to focus and plug in the full eight hours of work into what your job description requirements are. So I think part of the importance of this is establishing clear job descriptions for everybody townwide um, and making sure that we're revisiting these um, in our annual evaluations in accordance with the personnel policy. 
um, and determining our staffing needs based on that. Um, so I think with even as is, and I always believe you staff based on your current needs, not future projections or past needs. I think I think it's important to consider what our current staffing needs are. Um, I think all of these things are rolling up into what are our current staffing needs. I think the goal would be you have one utility cash receipt person that interfaces with the customer that takes the phone calls in relation to the payments of the accounts. You have one person that works from the billing and the customer maintenance um, and that answers the phone calls with, with questions about billing. And then you have Diane, who still is probably going to be a part of the, that monthly process when it comes to billing. The billing process is, is very manual. It's a bear. It takes about two solid weeks of effort just to manually go through the entire process. So we, we need as much manpower as possible. It's, it's pretty much an all hands on deck when it comes to utility billing, currently as it's done. We have pulled from all the utility departments to help when we had a part-time administrative assistant, she was helping 100% with the utilities. So I think um, all of that goes into this consideration. Brian? Um, I have discussed with Catherine and with Diane and, and with Anne that one thing we will need ultimately, and actually sooner rather than later, I mean, role, job description is incredibly important, but I said we need a group meeting and we need to outline in, in detail who's doing what, why, when, how, um, so that those responsibilities are clear. And I, I totally agree with Catherine. We are very short staffed. Um, this a, a new position is essential and we will ensure either I will start the process and the new town manager will finish it or whatever to lay out in very clear terms with each person in the room at the same time, roles and responsibilities. Thank you. Now, Alan and I have had experience with at least water and sewer billing for a number of years. Uh, we know how long that takes. We know the person that's done it, the electric Billing has been the problem, but still, is it? Uh, does it need a forty-hour-a-week person, or can this person be uh, a utility clerk and a admin assistant? Well, all the people in the office are cross-trained to, to fill in when, when emergencies come up or vacations come up, I'm sure. Not 100% at this time. It's something we're trying to move forward because we need to have cross-training in the event of, God forbid, an accident happens like we've recently had or an injury or an illness or any a vacation even. Um, we have to be able to continue operations as a town um, and as individual departments and cross training is the way to go with that. Right. And I, I don't think the board of selectmen should be micromanaging that. So. That's what you have a town manager for. You have supervisors for. Okay. Anything to add to the utility clerk posting? Yes, Fran. Um, to your point, Eli, you know, and I, I hear you loud and clear, there are some lines in this job posting that lend itself toward that admin assistant role. It says, for example, um, contributes to effective operations by provided, providing support where and when needed within the town office. Uh, I think that probably will cover those admin assistant parts of the role. So I think it's built into this job description. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay. Anything else on this? Okay. Uh, we should move on. This, what? We should move on. I think that's a good idea, Bob. That's where I was going. Uh, we have the Ashland Electric Department AED rate increase. Are we going to vote on, is this one voted on? Are we going to post it? Oh. Thank you, Fran. Um, shall we post the, uh, I'll entertain a motion to post the job. Oh. Full-time or part-time? I heard full-time. 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 Okay, do I have a motion? I'll make the motion to post the job full-time. We'll have to discuss the wages in non-public. Yeah. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call, Alan Silly. Aye. Andy Fitch. Aye. Bob Letourneau. Aye. Ann Barney. Aye. Eli Badger says aye. Moving on to the rate increase for AED. Who's jumping out there with this one? I'll jump out, but I'm not going to get very far. Um, I made up a couple of comparison sheets, I sent them along to everybody. I was having a hard time with it. I'm still having a hard time with it. The more I find out, the more I find out I don't know. Um, this morning, I could have told you how I wanted to go. I can't do that now. I've been given some new information and this is just a tough nut to crack. It has been suggested to me that we go with a flat rate, um, not necessarily do away with, we have five tiers right now. We could drop one of the tiers um, one of the tiers we're not going to change because we don't do anything for them. That is your, your uh, commercial grade, your, your number one on the, on the list. Uh, what we do for those folks is we provide them with power only. They supply their own transformers, we just meter it and we do have a metering fee and they do pay a, um, yeah, a demand fee. Um, as their demand goes up, they pay more money. That one should not be changed. We should be dropping the electric rate for, um, electric heat that should revert back to household most of if if you look at your rate structure for um public service uh, eversource you will see that they have closed that um, they are not accepting anybody in it everybody's getting away from it um, probably because a lot of people are putting in mini splits uh, they're going to renai type heaters uh, that they can put into these condos i know several condos at, at riverbend that have those in and have had them in for quite a while they may still even be getting the elect the lower electric rates that's why that should probably go away. Um, 
I was told that we should probably go to a fixed rate for everybody. But I got some more information today, and I'm kind of reluctant to do that um, at this time. I'm not sure where to go with this. I really am not. I don't have enough knowledge. Like I said, I gave you some rate structures. I figured out some, some um, what the rates would be, what the bills that I had on hand that I could compare to would be if we did these rates. I'm just, I'm, I'm not really sure where to go. This is a tough nut to crack. Okay. Yes, Catherine. I just wanted to ask, um, has anyone, Andy, have you seen the, the, it is a tiered rate system, but it's a much more simple, straightforward tiered rate system that other municipalities in the state of New Hampshire have. Um, and that tiered rate system is simply based on industrial, commercial, and residential. And so it's still tiered based on the type of meter you have and the type of demand you have, but it's based on the type of individual you are, whether that's a company um, or an individual. I, I mean, I agree with, with, with Andy as far as simplifying this rate structure. I think it's something that Ashland is sort of an outlier when it comes to a very complex tiered rate system. Yeah, I I caught a glimpse of one of those late this afternoon and it took and blew everything out of the water that I knew I wanted to do this morning. Um, we we have a tough nut here. We, we, we've got some work to do on this one and I'm just not sure whether we want to simplify it this time around or do we want to just add a penny to it and hope we can get a better fix on it next time. And I think it's, I commend your efforts, Andy. I, it's not straightforward or simple to take on something like this. I'm sure as soon as you started looking into it, you realize just how complex not only all the technical components of this are, um, but especially with our, our tiered rate system, there's a lot going on with it. Um, so I, I commend you for it. I think that um, it's a tough position that the board's in. Um, I think we, I think there's enough financial data and information out there to make a decision on whether a rate increase is needed or not. Um, and I think analysis like this going down the road is something that that is is great for management um, and governance to be involved in um, to see if we are operating as efficiently as possible. Any comments? Uh, yeah, Eli, I got just a, just a couple. Um... And it's, it's great that, you know, we met with, Andy and I met with Rob uh, yesterday afternoon and, and I'm glad, um, I'm glad he did that because it, it, he found out how, how complicated it is um, to figure all this stuff out. Um, now that being said, I think, I think we all know that um, we need a rate increase. We don't have a lot of capital down there. Um, you know, a lot of, we don't have a lot of money in the bank. Um, capital i'm sorry um if we just leave the the rate structure the way it is and we go up a penny across the tiers um we'll generate some cash that we need and then i think we can evaluate that and and make that a flat rate and maybe we can if once we get the evaluation done maybe we can lower it a little bit more um but I think everybody, all the selectmen know we need to we need to get some a little bit more money. We have a lot of projects on the horizon. 
Um, and we know we have to move forward with these projects. You know, the substations, the meters, uh, this all costs money. The, the new people, we want to keep our employees, number one, so we can do the work, we can provide power for the town of Ashland. Um, we're not set up like most towns where they know they have to wait for co-op to come and they expect to be out for hours to days. Nope, hardly anybody in Ashland, I don't think, is set up with a generator. So we are used to being number one on the on the list to be restored. And right now I, I can't guarantee that to anybody in the whole town that we'll be number one to be restored. Um, and that's what our, our, our town expects. Um, there are people on home oxygen um, that rely on power. Um, and that's, there is a list, we have a list and we have to provide them with power. Um, and right now, the longest we've ever been out with power, I think in the town of Ashland, as long as I've been here is probably six hours. And that was due to a, the feed problem um, from the Eversource, I think back about you know 10 years ago or so maybe. Um, so just raising the rates, I think a penny across the board, does that, how does that make the board feel? I mean, it's not gonna be a great increase um, for anybody. Um, and I think we've, we know that the kilowatts that we sell um, is, is, 100, is 17, million, 17 million kilowatts, I believe on the paper. Um, yep, over so, 797, yeah. yeah, over 17 million. So I think at that point we'll put some money in the bank and we can afford to get our staffing back um, and then we can afford to maybe buy these meters and then look forward to upgrading the substation. Absolutely. But right now we're in trouble. We, we need to get the crews in here. We need, we need to, to afford to, to staff our, our, our house up there. Uh, yeah, our, our infrastructure has not really been dealt with for 20 years. We need to get to the point where we can do some. That substation is 30 to 40 years old and they've never done a lot to it. Um, and, and it just goes on and on. We know we Craig, did Charlie raise the rates a while ago? Uh, the last increase that I know of that got done was when Steve Foley was here. Okay. Um, and that goes back, I believe, into 2016. And the commissioners did that rate increase, and it was a half a cent um, to pay for their raises, if you guys remember that whole fiasco. When they first initially got their first raises, and they, they jumped them guys up a lot. He raised it a half a cent to pay for that at that point. That's what I remember. And I, I think Ann's on the call too, if she. <laughs> I miss that, Catherine. I think Ann Sullivan's on the call. I think that's the 254-9554, if I'm not mistaken. She might recall is what to, to corroborate what Craig is saying. It was done by commissioners. Yeah. Yeah, I don't recall if it was true or that's what I was told. Mm -hmm. I know Charlie was thinking yeah. about before he left. It's Rusty, the 9554. Oh, hi, Rusty. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not sure if just to, to kind of corroborate and um, support what Craig is saying here, I'm not sure if everyone received the financial information that I sent out earlier, but I think I pointed out some pretty key factors um, of the, you know, the overall financial health of, of the electric department. And just the, the plain and simple fact is we do not have any reserves. We actually have a negative reserve um, in our fund balance net position um, for the electric department. All of our net position fund balance is tied up in capital assets, which really means you can't get any of that unless you sold off capital assets. And we know we need our capital assets to continue operations. Um, if we did a one a penny a kilowatt, um, we're talking about rough figures, $150,000 in revenue. We're talking about a 5% increase, a roughly estimate of in increase in bills for our utility customers per month. 
Um, and, and, if you, and if we did that, it would take a year just to get to a zero reserve and not having a deficit. And then it would take another year to build a small reserve of, of about $150,000. Um, so I think those are all just, uh, just things to consider. Um, we do need, we have staffing needs. With that being said, we have budget budgeted positions that aren't filled currently. There is some room there, um, but there are some significant infrastructure needs for the department and capital projects for the department um, in order to move things forward. Okay. And so, so Eli, final... just to... oh, go ahead, go ahead, Catherine. The only other thing I wanted to mention um, was we do have forty thousand dollars of revenue we can anticipate losing in twenty twenty one since we are no longer servicing New Hampton. Um, we made about forty thousand dollars a year just by um, having that agreement and partnership with them. Um, as of January twenty twenty one, we no longer have that agreement in place. So there's forty thousand dollars of revenue loss that we have. Uh, projected for 2021. Alan? Um, I've kind of waited to uh, let everybody get a chance to uh, have a say in this. And um, I guess it's uh, time that I jump into this a little bit. I'm just going to make a statement and then I'm going to make a motion. This should not be a comparison of rates to other utilities. This rate increase is about raising the monies needed to operate Ashland Electric. Mm -hmm. Having money for personnel and capital reserves for infrastructure is a must to move Ashland Electric forward and into the future. Now, uh, having said that, I'm gonna make the following motion. I propose that we raise the rates by 10% or one and a half cents per kilowatt hour. They both equal in comparison. Um, I don't like using percentages, but a lot of people understand that better than a rate increase with four decimal points. Now is, Alan, is this for every, every tier? It's across the board, the bottom line. It's not, you can, you can use it tier to tier if you want. This is one and a half cents added, if you want to say to every tier, there is, but it's basically across the board, a cent and a half, or you can say 10% if you want. Did you work out any numbers, Alan? Uh, Basically, yes. I mean, this is kind of what we've done with uh, when we were commissioners. Yeah. W working as backwards, I mean, because I'm taking a number that we need to raise for operations. Yeah. And, and that 10% that I'm c calling 10% would amount to uh, 300,000 a year. 3 million? 3 million, 10% yeah. is 300,000. Yeah. I'm right, trying to keep it simple. And that's, that equates to a penny and a half a kilowatt hour. And how do the rest of us feel about that? Well, we have a motion. Uh, I'm yeah. sorry. We do have a motion, right? Yes, I made that a motion. Okay. Do I hear a second? Hearing no second. Motion fails. Alan, what would you consider uh, the penny? I would consider the penny, but in my estimation, it's not gonna be enough. Um, let, let me ask, uh, Mr. Chairman, may I ask Craig more a question? Absolutely. Craig, are you available? Yeah, go ahead. Um, would a penny be sufficient to bring up your capital reserves to uh, uh, 
appropriate level for running the department and, and paying for these new hires? Um, well, when I all the conversations I had with Rob, um, we went back and forth over a cent, a cent and a half, two cents. Um, but the more you dig into all this stuff, you you, you realize we're probably all set. Rob thinks we're, our rates are okay if you didn't have the power purchase that uh, was made back in 2016. Um, so don't forget where we're um, we're at a disadvantage. We bought too much power that we're on the hook for. Until 223, right? Yes, I believe yes. it's 200, 2023. So we need to make that money up somehow. And we never, all these years, we've never raised the rates to make up the mistake that he made. So perhaps it's a half a cent to make up that and a cent to, to, to move us forward. But even a cent would put money in the coffers. Um, I expect when we get the, um, and this is from the experts at Vespa and um, Eaton, um, they all say our meters are running at 10 to 15% behind. Um, so we may see some revenue from that. They could be, if even if they're 10% behind, that's another $180,000 that we're going to gain once we put new meters in, um, even if we went on the short side. Um, I like Alan's figures, um, but if I don't know how I don't know if they're exactly correct, but maybe, I mean, I haven't seen anybody come up with that yet, but I mean, I like that figure that he, you know, 10% across the board. I, I think Andy did some calculations on the 1% too, and it, that spreadsheet Andy gave me, and I thought the one penny was about 7%, seven, 7%. Seven I don't know. I thought I, I figured that out last night, but um, you got to, I think, I think Bob, the answer to the question is a penny is okay, but a cent and a half is is great. Um, I'm sorry about it. I didn't give you a, a exact answer, but this is just talking with Rob, and I'm I'm not an ex. Um, this is just what I've talked with the with the experts. Um, so I, I I know it's not an exact answer you're looking for, but. Should, um, Craig, should we talk with uh? Betsa, uh, Steve Farnham. Uh, well, yeah, we can. Um, so I guess what I was going to ask before Alan made his um, comment was, don't it, it, we're going to post this at the tonight? I think after tonight, right for the two weeks notice. I think that was what was discussed last right. meeting, maybe. So we have time to sit down and have a roundtable discussion on this and get a little more information. From from Vespa from Steve, and they they're certainly willing to help us. We they we give them a lot of money a year, so so they're there for us. Yeah, and a nonprofit, so they will help us to as much as we need it. Everybody's told me, let me know what you need. The public hearing is posted for April fifth, so we do have more than two weeks. And in fact, you really don't need two weeks um, notice. But we it's it's been noticed already in the paper and uh, at the town hall and on the website. So you still have time to discuss it before that public hearing. Catherine? And yes, uh, VEPSA is really the experts in the field on this stuff. Um, they did do, Steve Farnham did do the analysis already for the penny a kilowatt raise, um, okay. which yielded that 5% increase um, on the end of our users, 5% change in their bill um, and, and in our revenue. Um, and was about $154,000 for rounding. Okay. So Eli, um, if you guys look at the calendar, Monday is free. I don't think we have a selectman's meeting. We have actually five Mondays in this month. Could we all sit down and those interested and, and have a roundtable discussion and, and talk about rates on that date. Maybe somebody's free. And how's how does everybody feel about that? You know, next Monday. I I can't do it. 
You okay. Well, in any event, I can get some more data if you guys want something more. Um, you just let me know. But I think maybe another meeting in between the the, the public hearing is is warranted, so we can actually sit down and see what we need, and so everybody's on board, right? I mean, I'm willing to I'm willing to have a meeting to discuss the rates. If other people. Um, it's a board decision. I'm on board with that. Um, I'd like um, Mr. Farnham to be there or, um, so we can all get information from him. If the board stops the date, I'll be happy to reach out to Steve again and um, and see if he's available on that date in that time. I know it does well, take a little bit to gather any data he would need. So anything. Um, if, that if Bob can't make that date, I think that we need to find another date that we all can meet. I do not want to exclude people from meeting. Perhaps you should check Mr. Farnham's availability and then throw dates back to the board. That would work. I need that. Are we done with Alan, do you want to try again? Um, or are you willing to wait for Mr. Farnham? I think that Mr. Farnham has stated and given us enough information to begin with, but um, I, I'm willing to give it another shot. I don't want to, but I'm, you know, willing yeah. to go for it. It's, I sense a reluct a, a reluctance. Um, well, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but I can tell you point blank right now, I'm not gonna change my mind. Well, so, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. But I wanna give people a chance to I understand that. express themselves. Okay, uh, Rusty? Yes. You wanna talk to us a little bit? Um, real quick, I was wondering if we could do an in-person meeting at some point in the near future to go over the uh, septage rates and to kind of change and restructure it to a tiered system. Um, but it'd be much easier to explain all this in person. I've been working with Eli some on this rates um, to kind of change it and just see what uh, people's feeling of that is. Um, after Friday, I get my shot, my second shot. So I may feel a little bit more at ease. Oh, I'm not muted. <laughs> Sorry. Um, what's the pleasure of the board? I think that's a good good idea to to meet and figure it out. Um, where will we have this meeting? Hopefully it's a nice warm day. We can have it outside would be the one consideration we have to have. You can only have it outside if we have recording capabilities because we have to, um, you know, publicize these meetings. Oh, I would think that the uh, meeting room at the at the call the Collins Street meeting room. That should be big enough for what you know, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I'm on board with that. And yeah, I'm fine with it. I've had both my shots. Congratulations. 
Alan? I'm fine with it. Um, we just have to pick a day. Yep, After and I'm slide. good with what it got inside. Shall we come up? Um, we, if we can come up with a day, we can get it all taken care of. Yep. Do we want to do it the same day that we do the electric department? It'd be nice. Uh, I see a head shake from Miss Barney. Yeah, I'm on board with that. Okay. So why don't we try to find We'll see when Mr. Farnham is available and then work the dates around that. Is that acceptable? Yes. Yes. Okay. So we'll do that. Rusty, we'll get back okay. to you. Sounds good. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And now We need a motion to go into non-public. And I'm going to ask Rusty to leave. I'm going to ask the police department to leave. Are we, yes, Catherine. Just a quick question. I just, uh, I'm just referring to my notes. Did we have a motion about posting for the AED superintendent position? I know we did for utilities collections clerk. Um, but did we, did the board vote to? I don't think it was a formal. I thought we did it more as a uh, consensus. Okay. I just wanted to make sure we were clear. Thank you. Okay. Um, so we need a motion to go into non-public session according to NHRSA 91A colon three, two, Small letter B. I'll make that motion. For the purpose of salary discussion. I'll make that motion. Okay. Who, who seconded? I did. Bob, yes. thank you. You moved, Bob. I was looking for you in the upper right hand corner. Okay, roll call vote. Um, uh, Andy Fitch. Aye. Bob Letourneau. Aye. Alan Silly. Aye. Ann Barney. Aye. Eli Badger. Aye. I am now turning off. I am putting part. Ladies and gentlemen, we came out of non-public um, and have sealed the minutes. Uh, in general, we talked about the hiring of personnel. Is there any other business before this board tonight? Alan. Um, once again, I'd like to bring up the issue of the office memo in its status. Okay. I'm not, okay. Is it our job as Board of Selectmen to talk about code of conduct with the staff when we have HR and a town manager? That's my question. Yeah, I believe in, in my opinion, um, when we started this, we were without a town manager. 
That's we right. now have a town manager. I feel it is their responsibility. Anybody else? I would agree with Andy. I think all of these issues are going to be resolved as we, you know, discuss roles and responsibilities, like we mentioned earlier. I, I, I think it can can be handled. And did I see you nodding your head? Yes. Yes. Bob, I, I don't think we should be micromanaging. Well, I'm just going to make this comment. This has been on the table for over three weeks. Yep. And I understand where you're coming from, Eli. But really what has just been said, there's no action going to be taken for a while. Well, I'm, and I'm, I'm just, going to say it's I am, difficult to deal with no edict that we have that we could put in there would be enforceable with this with the people in that office well i'm just going to go back to where this started this did start with the board okay and i'm just going to yep. make this statement one final statement when another employee leaves because of this inaction it'll be on us If you, uh, Alan, if you've convinced the rest of the members of this board, I'll see what makes the motion again. Uh, no need to. Okay. Anyone else have a comment? Well, I'd like to know what Alan's concern is. It sounds like it's pretty serious with him. Other than some of this, if we're going to talk about personnel, that's right. It's it's a non public. Has to be issue. a non public. Mm. But if I'm guessing right, some of the individuals in question are not subject to our oversight <laughs> do I have a motion to go into non-public hearing none I'll make, I'll, I'll make that motion there has been a motion bay made by Mr. Silly. I'll second it. Well, yes. Now, Alan, this would be, let me pull up my cheat sheet. Yeah, because I don't have it. I Let me pull up my cheat sheet. I am going to say this would be RSA 91A colon three of uh, number two, small letter C matters, which if discussed in public would likely affect adversely the reputation of any person other than a member of the, well, it can't be, I'm sorry. It can't be an under number three. It can't be an under that because, as I said earlier, I th think of there being a public, there are public officials in that office. So there's still a motion out there. I'm not sure that we can go into number non-public if there are public officials involved. I am not going to bring up public officials. Okay. 
okay? Then it would be an under 3C. Is there a second to that motion? I have seconded. Okay. Um, roll call vote. Well, any discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Andy Fitch? Aye. Bob Letourneau? Aye. Alan Silly? Aye. Ann Barney? Aye. Eli Badger says nay. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back into public. Um, we discussed a situation um, and the town manager will be taking care of it. Is there anything else before this board? No, I just want to mention one thing. I finally got my email server working here. Congratulations. <laughs> Well, I've worked with uh, that young lady up there in uh, Maine for about an hour and a half today. Andy, uh, I think, is there, there's, there, there are a couple of them up there. Uh, let me just go back here a second. I'll tell you exactly who it was. It was, it was, it was, it was. where is she? Oh, I deleted those emails. Oh, Kathy, Kathy Allen. Kathy, yes. yes. Very, uh, very, uh, very helpful. Uh, it was extremely helpful. There was some some issues that where my computer didn't want to talk to the town's computer. Yep. Or or we finally get it all figured out. Yep, that does happen. Yep, it does. So we're all good now. Okay. So that's the reason why I was so late in getting all this information. I understand. Yep. Uh, Forward should be better. Is there anything else before the board? I'll accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. Do I I'll second. A... All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.